evening, good afternoon from wherever part of the world and the country. You're watching a farmer's media, the evening farm drive with me, Jackie Mo. Today, I'm very excited as you can see the ambience out here. We are at the backyard of our studios and uh, it's Women Crush Wednesday and I want to crush on this beautiful lady who is doing this amazing job trying to beautify our walls here. This is just a, a form of urban farming. She has grown cherry tomatoes on tins and as you can see, they are doing so well. Zipora uh, Wairimo, you are doing a good job. This is an amazing job. They're just like three weeks old, and uh, she was being told today it's, a, it's about time that uh, we transplant them to um, somewhere where they now will grow to maturity. But thank you so much for joining us in the evening farm drive. As usual, my name is Jackie Mo, and I promise one lady, eh, there's one resilient lady, eh, Mary. Mary Modama Nasiali, eh, you are a strong woman. Today I'm crushing on you. I told you I would really love to have you in one of my shows. Kindly, please next time and join me in one of our shows. We talk about resilience. Kama kuna utu amekua resilient kwa you all. Manza, I big you up. I big you up. Hata kama you're usually silent, but you're the best. And you're the best mother for a farmer's media. Thank you so much for joining us in the evening. Farm Drive. We have a very interesting topic. We want to know how well do you know your hubs? How well do you know your hubs? And I'm um, joined by yet another uh, uh, beautiful lady uh, who is joining us uh, virtually. She's called Joyce Tairu. Um, she's one of the ladies who is uh, telling us more about hub farming. I saw her post on Facebook this morning and I was like, this lady, I have to look for her. Thank you so much, Joyce, for making time to join us in today's edition. Joyce, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. yes, thank you so much for joining us in today's edition. Probably you can start by introducing yourself to our audience. Tell us a little bit about Joyce. Who is Joyce? What do you do? And uh, I've seen your pictures. You're a very nice farmer who is doing so many things and great things. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Joyce Zairo. Uh, Joyce Zairo is a teacher by profession. I'm currently I'm a, a lecturer in a, in, a, in a public university. But besides that, I am very passionate about farming. So I do a bit of farming. Uh, I have two farms, one in Gong where I live and another one in Nyeri where I come from. Uh, and I grow a lot of herbs and uh, keep a bit of uh, uh, animals, like I rear dairy goats. And uh, basically, that's what I do. I, I have a lot of herbs here. I grow nastutians, I grow lemongrass, uh, mint, and many other herbs that, uh, that are actually in my farm, mainly for domestic consumption. But uh, I also grow lemongrass in, uh, in uh, large quantities in my farm in Nyeri. Uh, because, uh, I mean, and all these are actually grown organically because purely I'm an organic farmer and I don't use uh, any synthetic pesticides or fertilizers in my farm. I basically use um, whatever is available locally. Uh, and uh, as a Christian, I say that God has given us everything we need for this life and godliness. So in the farm, a lot of things grow. Uh, many people discard them as weeds, but for us here, most of those weeds are actually vegetables. Thank you so much. Very interesting. Uh, as, as you mentioned, you're an organic farmer and uh, you practice a lot of herb farming. Um, when I saw your post on Facebook, I was like, hey, this is a flower. Like, how does someone consume a flower as in are flowers edible? Uh, wow, I think uh, the best thing is uh, to find out because, uh, of course, we need to be sure that whatever you are eating is not toxic. So, I actually uh, looked for Nastutians myself because I realized uh, they, they also help in the organic farming. But they are really uh, liked by, by pests, so you plant them as a companion uh, crop for the main crop. Uh, but besides that, 
but they, are, they have they have a lot of nutritional value so i actually started consuming them initially i was just growing the orange the orange and astutium and uh, finally i had to look for the yellow and uh, the red and uh, I'm, I'm enjoying them i'm enjoying the the, the leaves these actually as vegetables uh, they are very nutritious they actually have a lot of medicinal value and i also enjoy the uh the the flowers and uh flowers can actually be used to even garnish uh garnish food they can also be used uh, in uh, in salads uh and uh the seeds actually the, the seeds have been giving um seeds to my animals as uh, for dewarming but recently i saw something online that the, the seeds are also very nutritious and of course going onwards I'll be eating the seeds. Actually, Nastutians produce a lot of seeds. So you can actually have a, a bounty harvest of seeds. And uh, the, the plant is extremely aggressive. If you're not careful, you can have it the whole of your farm. So actually, you just need to, to concentrate it on in a, in a small portion where you, you need it to grow. Uh, also, the, the plant is good for animals. I, I, I rear rabbits and uh, I feed the rabbits on Nastutium. And, it's very good, uh, very, very good. It's not bitter, even for any consumer it as a vegetable. I mean, it's just healthy, healthy lifestyle. Thank you. You rushed us, you know, we just jumped into the conversation and I know our audience are watching and they're like, wait, wait a minute. What is this Nastutium? Um, how did you get to know about it? Because you've mentioned the other kinds of uh, herbs you grow, lemongrass, there's mint, this one people already know. How did you come to learn about Nastutia? What exactly is this crop? Tell us a little bit about it. Okay, initially as an organic farmer, I was, I, I, we normally encourage uh, actually integrated pest management. So I look for Nastutia uh, uh, as a plant to actually uh, plant as a, as a companion plant for other crops because it's really liked by things like um, uh, white flies so you plant it instead of the the white flies attacking the main crop they they actually attack the nastutium but uh, as i continue growing it I, I i actually discovered it's a vegetable so i started consuming it and uh, i also discovered that initially i had only the orange they they, they, they come in different flowers otherwise the plant is looks the same uh, but the flowers are different so i had the orange which actually, actually can fill the whole farm if you're not careful and uh, I, I I grew it for a long time. Then recently I found somebody with uh, the other two types, the yellow type and the red type. And I got it and I'm very excited at least now even you're garnishing. Uh, I mean, uh, even the, I mean when you're putting in salads, it, it, it puts a lot of color. And of course, color is very, very, very good uh, for, for, I mean, do you know different colors provide different, uh, you know, nutrition for the, for the body? So I mean the the, be, the 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 more the better. So yes, that's it. I consider it as flowers, and I tell them no. This is a vegetable. You don't just have to eat um, to eat uh, sukuma wiki. And uh, yes, so and I, I we have a lot of other vegetables that people consider uh, as as weeds, and we, we we eat them here in in our in our organic farm in our organic home. Thank you. Uh, from uh, that explanation you've given, it seems like uh, the Nastutium is uh, probably a wild plant that uh, grows um, in the wild. Yes, it's actually grown in the wild. Actually, the yellow part, uh, the yellow uh, and, um, Nastutium. That... <laughs> Pardon? Yes, uh, we are listening. Uh, I was saying that the yellow, the yellow uh, part, I actually got it from a uh, roadside. So they actually grow wildly, and people assume that uh, I mean these are just wild plants. Yet they they, they are actually uh, very good vegetables that can actually help uh, help us even as we think about curbing food insecurity. Because you find people just eat uh, cabbages, <laughs> people eat sukumawiki and spinach. Yet. There are so many vegetables, a time like now when it has rained. Actually, if I come to, if I go to a farm, I will identify so many vegetables that people just discard as weeds. 
And uh, I think we, we need uh, to broaden our, our knowledge as far as these vegetables are concerned because like this Nastutium, if you, you actually find Google, find the scientific uh, data written about it, you'll be surprised. It has so many nut nutrients. It has a lot of medicinal value, and we really need to to understand this so that we are able to to, to even uh, improve our 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 health, our health and uh, also uh, I mean food security. So uh, there's so an X Y Z. Yes, pardon. I was thinking people, and uh, now you're talking about the wild plants, and I'm thinking now if I'm to get that flower, what what do you eat it with? Ugali, rice, chapati? Uh, or how do you even prepare the, let's say, the leaves, for instance? Uh, the preparation of, of, uh, of the mastutium is more different from the way we prepare the vegetables. For example, the way we prepare spinach, uh, uh, the way we prepare skuma week is, is just the same. And of course, uh, besides preparing it as a vegetable, we can also make teas. The one of the things I, I do with herbs is to make tea. So if you pluck a few a few nastutium leaves and boil in, in water, of course put in boiled water and uh, you know cover it uh, for a few minutes to steep, you will drink very, very healthy uh, cup of nastutium, I don't know that to call it nastutium tea or nastutium drink, a very healthy drink. And also the flowers, the flowers, you just put them in boiling, in hot water, cover for a, a few minutes, like five minutes and, and drink. And actually, you, 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 your, your body will thank you for, for doing that. Yes. Yeah. I, I... have been how it feels you know to consume nasturtium tea or uh, the flowers uh one of the things is that uh, when with with knowledge you, of course you know you are, you are you are consuming things that are and as you eat that but of course you know uh, the body is getting the proper nutrition from the plant so uh, I would encourage people to to find out what what are the health benefits of uh, consuming nasturtium because you'll be surprised uh, at the the you know the amount of uh, nutritional value that it gives you. But as for the feeling, I I will not uh, you know apportion a certain feeling and say when I drink nasturtium tea, this is the kind of feeling I I have. But of course, uh, you you know you you're taking something healthy, and of course you're building your body, especially the immune system. He mixes uh, some mint, and um, it somehow helps to relax one's mind. I don't know if, if the feeling is the same with uh, nasturtium tea, or probably it reduces constipation. How would you say your feeling? The feeling is once you consume this um, wild herb. Uh, I, let me. I think I'll answer that question generally by saying, like, I mean, it's like asking me what feeling I I have when I eat skuma wiki. You know, when something you eat on a daily basis, actually, you don't expect a different feeling. It's only that you know that. Uh, I mean, you're helping your body. You're giving it uh, a lot of nutrition. I mean, a lot of nutritional value. But uh, for the feeling, I will not uh, say that there's a specific kind of feeling, but. Uh, Actually, with knowledge, you just know that when you go to the farm, by the way, I have a lot of herbs, a lot of, uh, like now it has rained. When I go to the farm to, to, to pick, let's say, my vegetables, I will have about seven or eight or even close to ten uh, vegetables. This kind of a feeling I'm getting it from the nasutium. Um but of course, you know, uh, if, for example, you take the flowers and the leaves and put it in and make a, make a, you know, a drink, uh, it becomes, uh, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, I would just say I don't associate any feeling to the drinking or the eating of nasturtiums, but I know it is healthy uh, living. So let's talk about the health benefits of uh, the nasturtium crop. Uh, from the little research I've seen, uh, um, it has a lot of health benefits from uh, 
containing iron, there's a, a number of vitamins. Probably take us through the health benefits of um, uh, this uh, hub and um, why should people make it like a habit or a norm for them to grow at least one or two herbs in their compounds? Um, okay, first and foremost, uh, I mean, uh, okay, mixing, uh, mixing these, um, these vegetables, first and foremost, it, uh, you know, helps you to, uh, to have like, um, you know, a, 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 hel a healthy diet. And uh, I think, uh, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, 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 I cannot, you know, I have so many herbs, Jackie, in my farm. I may not say that these are the, the exact health benefits of, of Nastutium offered. I may not know that offered, but what I know is that it has a lot of benefits and I would challenge probably our viewers to be able to, you know, to do more research and find out what are these health benefits because I may not really you know, isolate and say these are the health right now, you know, you know, off head. Because, you know, if you talk about, let's say, so many herbs, I may not keep in my head that these are the, the, the vitamins you get from the, unless, of course, I do a Google search, which I'm not able to do now. But what I would tell you is that should you find, just, just do a, a little Google search, you'll find a lot of health benefits from nastutiums, and actually you would thank yourself for consuming them. So you've also mentioned uh, you've grown other kinds of herbs uh, on your compound. Probably take us through, like for instance, uh, even us in our compound here at the office, we've planted lemongrass, but uh, many people don't know exactly how to consume uh, the lemongrass. Even when uh, they're preparing the tea, you find that uh, they're doing it the wrong way. How should uh, people consume lemongrass and uh, how can it be used uh, in uh, creating a day-to-day meal? Uh, okay, lemongrass, by the way, has many uses. Uh, the, the stalk can be used as a vegetable. The stalk actually is, is used as a vegetable. So you can actually prepare and mix with carrots, um, you know, and, you know, other vegetables. You know, if you are coming from where I come from, your stew must have uh, potatoes. <laughs> you can mix with that. Uh, so the stalk can be used as a vegetable. The leaves are very good. By the way, that, uh, um, you know, um, lemongrass is actually food for the brain. This, it helps a, a lot in memory. Lemongrass has a, is, is so potent. It has also a lot of uh, medicinal and nutritional value. Uh, but mainly it is actually food for the brain. It can even uh, treat some conditions of the brain. It can even make ease things like dementia. Combined with rosemary, rosemary is another food for the for the brain. Combined with rosemary, if somebody gets used to taking rosemary and lemongrass tea, it is actually very good food for the brain. Actually, it can treat even, it can ease and things like dementia. It can improve your memory. Uh, that is something that I, I would mention. Now, there is also the lemongrass root. Lemongrass root is also very, very, very good. It's a very good, um, you know, it's also very, it has a lot of potency. Yeah, and actually you can also make, uh, uh, you know, tea using the lemongrass root. It, it really helps. And actually you can also uh, blend it and uh, make uh, and add into, into smoothies and uh, it also have a lot of benefit to the body. Uh, so lemongrass, mm -hmm. you can make the leaves for the tea, the, the stalk, the stem for as a vegetable, just the, the, in, into, into, your, into your stews. Also, the, um, the, the, the root is also very good. You can actually blend it and add it into smoothies. It's also very, it has a lot of uh, potency. But that way you are having that crop, where you are eating the leaves, you are eating the seeds, you are eating the roots. <laughs> You're not yes. even sparing anything. <laughs> yeah, everything on top of the eaten. <laughs> interesting, interesting. What about um the mint? Um, the, there's a there's another crop that looks like the mint. I can't remember the name. How is the mint, or how should the mint be be prepared 
it, should it just be cooked in stews or can it be made into a smoothie? Uh, mint can also be used uh, in cooking. I mean, uh, mint in stews. It can also be used in smoothies also. Uh, it can also be used in teas. Where, and of course, in teas, the best thing is to boil the water. Uh, immerse your, your, your herbs and cover for a few minutes so that you get the full benefits of, of the tea. So mint can also be, actually I use it, I use, I use uh, as a tea, I use it as, as a cooking aid. Uh, yeah, and uh, life is good. <laughs> very nice, that's very nice. I'm imagining the kinds of teas you have. I'm envying you. Like today morning, you can take mint tea. Tomorrow, you're taking nasturtium tea, eh, chamomile yes. tea, lemongrass tea, like different teas on a daily. And that's the kind of uh, healthy living that uh, I think you're talking about. Yes, sure. Now, let's talk about how these um, herbs, all these herbs are grown. Do they require a big space? How can someone uh, start such kind of uh, venture? And would you say uh, herbs business is profitable? Uh, okay, I, I, I must say that I, I, that question I will answer with a, a bit of uh, pinch, I mean, uh, with, with a bit of reservations because I have seen many farmers online, uh, you know, complaining that there is no market for this, there is no market market for the other. But I, I like telling people that uh, you need to tell people what you are doing. You, I mean, why are we having this, this conversation? Is because I say that I, I normally use an astutium. You need to, we need to, as farmers, we need to tell people what we do. I mean, uh, without, without being embarrassed, actually, uh, because many farmers are stranded with goods, with produce that, that, that they, they are holding, because they don't know how to even use social media platforms even to market what they have. Uh, provided, I, I know my, 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 my mantra is, can I take lemongrass? Yes. So other people can also take it. If, for example, I educate them about the uses of lemongrass, why will they not? Uh, why will they not buy it? And then um, uh, the other thing is, we need to to let people know that these things are also have a lot of nutritional value and also medicinal value. Because actually, like in, here in my home, when somebody else has a flu or something. We are not quick to go to the chemist. We just buy a few things. But there I have so many herbs. I have different types of basils, which we use we use for, for flus and such kind of thing. You need to know this kind of plant, this kind of a herb, what else can it do? And then, of course, we need to go into value addition, where we dry and also grind and sell to people even in small quantities. If you have a large quantities, you also, uh, you also I mean, uh, tell people. We need to learn how to tell people what we do, even if it is it means starting small. Uh, and as I said, I mean, if you can consume something, other people can also consume it. Uh, and you just uh, become a marketer. You market and market and don't shy away from market, telling people what you do. And people will buy it. And especially, if, for example, somebody has a flu, uh, like somebody came with a, 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 a kid here who was coughing badly. So I give them a uh basil one of one of the kinds of basil i told them go and boil this for the kid and also uh you know boil some water and let them you know cover cover them with put it in cover them with a blanket and let them inhale and then the, the baby got got healed i mean that's that's a that's a market there right there and by the way i also have another 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 hub that is raspberry which I, 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 I actually give to people who, who have issues to do with, uh, you know, fibroids. And I want to tell you, uh, this thing is so potent that a lady had been told by a doctor, you know, you cannot conceive because the fibroids have actually blocked the fallopian tubes. And she came here and I gave her, and guess what? She got a baby, so she had to name me. So I told her, if it's a girl, <laughs> you have to name me. And so it happened. So anyway, as I said in the beginning, God has given us all things things for our use. And of course, uh, God's people perish for lack of knowledge. We need to seek knowledge. And now knowledge is in the public domain. There's so much. For, uh, for me, I will go far and why to look for a hub. 
that particular basal that I'm talking about, I, somebody gave me an order. And I looked for it in all the nurseries within Nairobi and around here, and I could not get it. And I had to go to Ororua Forest to look for it, and that is where I got it. And I can assure you, I talk about it day and night, because if you have flu, uh, that is a one-stop shop. You, you, your flu is as good as gone. And many other things. So we need to seek knowledge. We need to embrace, we need to ask ourselves, what, our, what were our forefathers using before a mainstream medicine came? And I have a lot of respect for mainstream medicine. It's not that I dis disregard it. But of course, we, we, we know that uh, whatever we have is what we, we are taking to the West. And they are making medicine and bringing to us. What if we have the knowledge to know that this kind of a plant has this kind of potency and we make use of it? And I think that is why we went to school. We didn't go to school just to be employed. We need to school so that we are able to get to learn how to learn so that we are able to embrace knowledge. And this knowledge is what is going to liberate us because like I will, I think I will diverge and tell you, I, I do dairy goats here, and these dairy goats are organically farmed. We don't even deworm them with synthetic uh, dewormers. We just deworm them from what we grow in the farm, and they are fine. In fact, my vet is always complaining, Joyce, sikuizi, unipati, kazi. But, I mean, the, my goats are not getting ill because we are, we are using whatever we have in the farm. Thank you. Yeah, very interesting. You've raised some very interesting points. And I, I actually reminded me when I was preparing this show. And, uh, you know, back in my village, uh, there are these uh, people who usually uh, prepare the traditional medicine. And I was like, this lady is, uh, is uh, let's say, now the modern form of uh, the traditional people in the village. Because then they usually make these traditional medicines, put them in a different uh, vibuyus. But now you, you have that garden of yours, like you talked about Basil. It's a modern way of doing things and um, and people need like really to venture into such kind of farming because like you mentioned, Basil, you could not find Basil in any nursery. You had to go to a forest to get Basil. Yes. yes. Mm, so um, that's very interesting. Probably you, you didn't mention about uh, the spacing that uh, someone requires for growing their herbs and um, do they require any kind of probably manure uh, do they get attacked by pests tell us a little bit about the the herb crops how they are grown okay now uh, sorry about that i mentioned that i must say that for you to do herb of farm, i mean uh, you know herbs farming you don't need a lot of space actually Things like meat, because they can take over your farm, you just need, let's say, a few a few tires to begin with. Let's say used tires, used containers, used sacks, and you start off. And you just need to buy, let's say, one seedling. Uh, of course, now I'm making, I'm, I'm making the people who sell seedlings lose, <laughs> lose market, but you just need one seedling each. And then you will be able to propagate and then look for knowledge on how to propagate this. And every information is online. You can get information online to propagate all these hubs. So you don't need a lot of space. Yes, you need manure because, again, uh, if you are an organic farmer like me, you, you need uh, to have manure because, of course, we need to understand that plants need food. And food uh, for plants is actually found in the soil. And unless you're intentional about putting that, um, you know, nutrition or food into the soil, you will be asking the soil to give you something that it does not have. So you need to learn how to uh, to put, um, I mean, you need to, to have manure. It could be goat manure, chicken manure, cow manure, but it needs to be properly processed. I mean, not not raw manure. I mean, uh, that, that cannot, I mean, the plants cannot, Pest management, uh, what I, I practice is integrated uh, pest management. Uh, where, as I told you initially, I, I look for nastutium as a way of controlling pest pests in other crops. You find that um, uh, this plant probably is attacked by aphids. Uh, for example, a, a plant like mint is really liked by white flies. If you plant mint, you find it is really, it is uh, white flies really like it. So. You need to have another plant, for example, ma ma, you know, marigolds, 
to be able to repel to repel those those pests so you actually do what we call integrated uh, pest and disease management uh, and then of course um, we also we also make uh, our own fertilizer we also make our own pesticides uh, you know from the things that are found locally <laughs> we make pesticides using um, things like marigolds Marigolds make very good pesticides, so you'll be able to spray that. We also use um, plants like um, Tithonia. I don't know whether people know about Tithonia. Tithonia is uh, the plant that has like a false sunflower. So we use that to make our pesticides. And uh, we, we, also, uh, we, also do, uh, we also do vermiculture. Vermiculture is growing of worms, growing of worms. And those worms are able to produce uh, what we call vermi liquid, which is also very good uh, fertilizer and a pesticide. So when we integrate all that, uh, and also we, we use wood ash, you know, whatever you burn, when you burn, when you burn wood, the ash that you get has very many good benefits for the for the plant so you see everything uh is circulates around here you get uh, you get uh, things like um uh comfrey comfrey is a has a very good uh, you know nutritional value for the plants so we make pesticides and uh uh and uh, and fertilizer using those materials so we also spray our crops using that and uh Yes, that's how we manage the pests. That's how we manage uh, the diseases in the herbs and every other plant that we have in our compound. I assume you also make use of the rabbit urine. Yes, we also make use of the rabbit urine. Actually, the reason why I started bearing rabbit is because I needed to have the rabbit urine, which we use in our farm. So we use all that, and actually we don't struggle with pests, we don't struggle with diseases. We are trying to make it look all rosy for um, herb farming, and um, you even mentioned uh, the available market that is out there, it's only that people don't do a lot of marketing. Are there any challenges that you face when it comes uh, to the growing of crops? Because you mentioned um, the crop, some of the crops uh, are a bit invasive, so probably you might find there are some of the crops that are competing for space on the farm. Yes. Uh, I mean, you just have to be intentional. You, 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 you understand that this particular crop, for example, mint, can actually take over your farm. So you, you, you just know how to deal with that, that issue. And uh, of course, uh, you, let's say, get a boundary on where it cannot go beyond. And put a, let's say, even if it's a dam, small dam liner, even if it's a small tire, or just constrict it. Constrict it in a place where it does not actually take over your farm. Uh, other challenges are issues like drought. I mean, now even herbs need water. All plants need water. So like now, uh, when it was so hot, I mean, now our, our farm was looking very bad. Like now I'm happy if you plant, if you want to pay a visit, at least the farm is looking very nice right now. And uh, the other challenge, of course, and besides that, I also sell these seedlings. So uh, so basically, as we, we market even the crops, you also market the seedlings. If you don't market as like most farmers do, uh, you, you will have challenges of the market. And, uh, and other challenges is where a customer tells you prepare for me these uh, so many seedlings, and then they disappear in the air, especially the cost, some of the customers online. So, I mean, it, it calls for balance because, again, you cannot dismiss all clients because of uh, the behavior of one client. But those are basically some of the challenges we are facing. But um, at the end of it, it all, uh, of course, life cannot be without challenges, and that is what makes us strong. Thank you. Very, very true and very well spoken uh, there. That is uh, Joyce Tairu. She is one of the ladies who is uh, venturing into herbs and spices farming. There's a lot of comments and uh, queries coming through on our social media platform. But remember, we are still live all the way up to 5 p.m. We are still with Joyce talking about nas nastutium, nastutium. Uh, farming. <laughs> yes. Do you know what is that?
PPM. Tell us on our comment section. And um, if you have any questions for Joyce, uh, this is the day we have made it for all of you to come talk about herbs and spices, what you know, what you need to know. We have Joyce uh, on the line with us. And um, here at Farmers, we are having this campaign on aflatoxin by markup, uh, funded by the European Un uh, Union and um, implemented by UNIDO, where we are talking about aflatoxin, uh, its effects on humans, and uh, also from the soil up uh, to the crop and uh, its effects on humans. Uh, did you know that uh, aflatoxins actually affect uh, chilies, some of the spices, and uh, peanuts? This is a campaign we are running throughout this month of December where we want to raise awareness on um, the effects of aflatoxin on, um, um, on our food systems and um, where does it erupt from. And what a way, a very good day because we are joined by Joyce. Joyce, uh, you've talked a little bit about herbs and uh, this campaign you're running is on aflatoxins. Have you ever been uh, affected by aflatoxins and uh, which crops uh, on your Yeah, and uh, I, I think that is a very uh, good question. But uh, I mean, I must I must confess that I always thought uh, that af aflatoxins only uh, I mean affect uh, cereals, things like crops. I mean, these like maize and and beans and so on when the moisture content is not well controlled. Uh, actually, I'm learning from you that it also affects other crops. Uh, like chili, but uh, for peanut, of course, uh, being like a, you know, like a cereal, of course, I would imagine if it does not dry properly, then the the issue of aflatoxin will actually affect. And uh, I, I think this is this calls for for again knowledge because uh, I mean most farmers don't consider things like uh, you know the importance of maintaining the right uh, moisture. I mean moisture content in in the crops. And at the end of it all, you know, it, oh, we, are all, we are all affected because uh, when we eat that maize that has aflatoxin, of course, you know that the, the challenges it is likely to bring uh, to our bodies. And also, of course, uh, these are the same things that are used to make um, animal feeds. So animals will actually be affected and through the animals, we will also be affected. So I think this is a good campaign that you are running. I really commend it. And we farmers need to embrace this knowledge. And of course, this knowledge needs to be disseminated to us, the farmers. The farmers need to take action so that we are able to actually take care of the, you know, the, the general population. Now that we are the people who feed uh, the population. Thank you. Yes. Simple question uh, that I might ask still on the aflatoxin campaign. Um, where do you think the aflatoxin erupts from? Does it come from the crop, the soil, or uh, the final product that, uh, uh, like you've mentioned, it's the cereals uh, due to lack of uh, proper storage? Where do you think uh, aflatoxins erupt from? In my view, I think uh, I've always thought that aflatoxin arises as a result of uh, not drying the, the cereals or the food. Uh, correctly. So in my view, I, I, I mean, I have always thought it arises from the storage. But uh, I would like to, to know more about, uh, you know, the, the, the soil and other, and other areas where aflatoxin comes in so that I, I learn and also become uh, knowledgeable about these matters. Very interesting because aflatoxins actually come from the soil. It's, uh, it's okay. soil born. So this is a campaign you need to follow keenly so that you learn um, the, the effects of aflatoxins right from the soil to the time the crop grows until to the storage. It does not just come from the storage, it comes from the soil. Oh. So yeah, oh. this is a campaign you need to follow up. And uh, Yes, now let's talk about uh, dairy goat farming uh, because I know we've kept you for a long time. Uh, tell us a little yes. bit, what kinds of uh, are you keeping? Uh, okay, I I started dairy goat farming about about um, I say about 15 years ago, and uh, it was for a reason because one of my sons was reacting to cow milk, and I looked for goat milk and I could not get it. I looked for an alternative I could not get, so I look for goats. So I started rearing goats, and uh, I have I have a lot of goats close to in 12. 12, the 12 goats there, currently I'm milking about five goats. 
and uh, I keep mainly sunen people 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 rare sunen I rear mainly uh, sunens and a few alpines and uh, this is a uh, this is actually what I would call a social a social enterprise something just to support the community because you realize uh, in the community uh, people need a very good meal there are people with arthritis and they, the doctor advises them to take good milk so they know where to get it in our farm uh, there are people like and got a, a parent who told me that uh, they, 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 they has, has a child has cerebral palsy and they were advised to look for daily good because it a daily good meal because it has very high levels of calcium. Uh, we have people with who are reacting to cow milk. Uh, so those are my customers. So in essence, uh, I keep daily goods um, as a business, but mainly is to support the community because. Uh, actually, I know very few people who are there in Kosa around me. So, if somebody was in need of of uh, daily goat milk, I mean, uh, I mean goat milk, and uh, and they needed it, they might have nowhere to to find it around where I live. But I'm able to supply them. I have elderly people who have been advised that their calcium levels are low, so they need to take goat milk. And those are my customers. It has been very fulfilling, even. Um, having the daily goats of course i uh, milk and i get some little money out of it they also give manure for my farm uh, so basically we have nutrients transfer the, the, the crops transfer the nutrients to the goats the goats transfer the nutrients back into the farm and it become it is actually cyclic and so i i, I love it just and very therapeutic actually those of us who have animals in the farm we cannot uh, stay without the animals because it is just therapeutic relating with animals. You know, animals are not like human beings. Animals, I mean, you show kindness to them, they return with kindness. I mean, they they, they are just good. They they have no ill motives. And so basically it can be a therapeutic um, way of, of, of living. I have people bringing their children here to, to see animals, especially people from Nairobi. They come and see animals and they are happy. They are people who, who come here just to, to get hold of a, a baby baby goat. I mean, the, the, the children are extremely happy. So yeah, that, that is, I mean, the part of what I do in the, in the daily good uh, part of Very it. Very interesting. Yeah. I know um, uh, myself, I've, I've really tried to be a uh, livestock keeper. I tried rabbits and I've had some few cats and uh, dogs and um, I think I have a small hut because um, there's a time I traveled and when I came I found my rabbits had been um, slaughtered. I don't know if they were fighting with a cat or a dog and I found them oh. lying down and that was there and, uh, and uh, rabbit keeping. I've never tried again because I was so heartbroken. Pole, <laughs> pole. Oh, it's not easy. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, yeah, you can imagine that if you how many goats did you say you have? I have I've close to ten goats. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So I by day any kind of farming is not for people with small heart like mine because even yeah. I uh if she told me to plant the herbs uh, it it looks very nice but then if I come one day and find that they have dried because there was no water in this drought. That will be the end yes. of me, and that's the that chapter. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah, so I, what keeps you I, going? Like, what makes you to continue uh, looking for more, looking for knowledge, and trying to uh, better your skills in the hubs and even daily goat farming? Uh, I must say, I am, I'm very passionate about farming. In, in fact, if, uh, when we were choosing courses to go to college, I even had a mentor being, I would actually be in agriculture because, uh, and of course I would be teaching agriculture because I love teaching and I love agriculture. So I would be teaching agriculture. So I'm just passionate about farming. 
and uh, because I'm passionate about it, I will look for knowledge. In fact, I, I must tell you that uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, if I interact with, it, and I, I don't, I don't mean to to despise anybody, but uh, when I interact, let's say, with people working in the Ministry of Agriculture, I think probably they might just have to learn from me because. I mean, I, I look for information about farming on a daily basis, consistently. I mean, I have to look for that new knowledge. If I hear there's a farmer with a certain crop, plant that I need in Rimuru, I will drive there. I mean, uh, without counting the costs, because I'm very passionate. There's a, there's a guy who has a, a you know, um, a nursery of, let's say, like 3,000 herbs. So I always like going there and uh, interacting with him. Because I'm just passionate, I, I love it. And then, of course, knowing that your family is eating very clean uh, food, devoid of uh, synth uh, synthetic um, uh, synthetic fertilizers and any residue, I mean, it gives me a lot of joy and a lot of satisfaction. And knowing that uh, if somebody has has an issue, a medical issue, I, I can I can help to some extent. Uh, because I have a hub which I know exactly its potency. Uh, that keeps me looking for knowledge. And of course, when I look up, I look for knowledge, uh, I, I like looking for evidence-based no, evidence knowledge, not just a, a little Google search. I'll look for papers that were written about, let's say, lemongrass. And uh, so when I'm talking to somebody about something, I am very confident of what I'm talking about. It's not just here. See, for example, when I tell you this thing, if you take it, it's going to, uh, to, to cure your, to dry up your fibroids. I know it is from scientific data. It will do it. And of course, when it goes and does it, uh, people keep on coming and coming back. And uh, passion makes me going. I am so interested in, in plants. Uh, the saddest thing that happened is when I probably I hire a new uh, farm assistant. They think, in fact, when you visit, if you visit my farm, you, you will not see crops, you see weeds. Because a lot of these things, unless I tell you this is this and this is that. So if they decide to be aggressive and farm before I introduce them to my, my crops, I find that they have already weeded all my, my, my herbs. And some, I have shared that here or two many, many times when I have a new farm assistant and they have uprooted my you know my plants just like you talked about your, your rabbits being eaten but uh, I mean I will just go and look for it again and plant again and uh, tell them now I mean, whenever you have a new farm assistant I tell them please do not till anywhere unless until I, I tell you because uh, in my farm you find asparagus people don't know what that is uh, they think it's a weed. They, they, you you will you will find uh, you know plants like another one called ru r u e. <laughs> I know you've never seen or heard about that. I mean, then those are my crops. I know I know what they do. I know their potency. Uh, yes. So uh, that is that's it. I love I love farming. So I look for knowledge because with knowledge um, your your we're able to move far. The saddest thing is that we, uh, we, 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 we would spend hours and hours, you know, getting entertained, and zero hours, uh, you know, uh, learning. And you know how much knowledge can transform one's life. Uh, I, I mentioned that I normally deworm my goods organically. I mean, that is knowledge I got from India. I asked, I just asked, did a Google search, how do organic farmers deworm their goats? And I, I, I learned that, uh, I mean, I learned how they do it using aruvera. So I just multiplied my aruvera, and that is how, what we used to treat our animals. In fact, by the time we call our vet, a vet, which is very rare, actually, they just come to dehorn the goats. Uh, I mean, we've, we've wait, I mean, it's long since we, 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 we called a vet because the animals are healthy. Why? Because aruvera is antibiotic, antifago, it is a broad spectrum. When we give it on a consistent basis, the animals develop immunity. They are healthy generally. When they show signs of illness, we just pump into them aruvera, they eat and they are well. In fact, <laughs> when I get a new farm and I tell them today we are giving the animals aruvera, they think I'm joking. 
And I tell them, this is it. This is how we treat our animals. And the minute you don't give them enough aloe vera, I'll be able to tell because I will see, uh, you know, the animals are becoming weak. And you see, that is as a result of looking for knowledge. Now, the, the alternative, whenever we used to deform, uh, deworm animals using synthetic uh, dewormers, we had to withhold, uh, you know, usage of milk for 72 hours. That is a great loss. For, for when, when milking, like now I'm milking five goats, of course a goat gives you about a liter in the morning and a liter in the evening. So if you take three days and multiply by, by 10 liters, that is a lot of milk. But we give a rubella and we don't even, I mean, they don't fall ill, we don't deworm, so we don't withdraw any, you know, any milk from human consumption. At the end of it all, the rubella costs nothing because I've just planted it in my farm. At the end of the day, you just you just counting profits because there is minimal uh, expenditure as far as uh, managing uh, these uh, these animals are concerned, save for let's say the feed that we normally buy for them. Thank you. Really challenged me today on uh, the issue of uh, spending a lot of time being entertained and. Uh... Uh, we, we, I'm not usually that keen on wanting to learn more. There's that man you've talked about who has like 3,000 herbs on their farm. Like, really? How does he? How does he even know this? The name of each kind of herb. Uh, I will introduce you to that man. Although he's usually very busy, it's hard to get him. But I'm telling you, you get there and you are old old you know oh you just get into oh this guy knows his herbs he knows what they do how well they grow that is his life and uh, you get just so amazed i've taken many people there because that's mainly where i get my herbs and i fact, when i told you i, I looked for that particular base and i could not find it in his in his nursery i knew that's it until i decided to go to the forest to look for it so in essence, when somebody is so passionate about when you, if you meet him, you think, oh, this is somebody who is not doing well. But I can assure you that man is living his life to the fullest. He's even living life to the fullest than many people that we think are alive doing that because he's so passionate about his, 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 his uh, and actually he told me how he developed his passion. He was, he was employed as a farm, as a, as a farm had uh, somewhere in, in, by a white person who was so passionate about herbs and uh, I think when he got in, he got, um, he, he started working there, he just got interested. Uh, his name is Kamau. Kamau will import a rosemary from the, from, from the West as a, at a cost of 5,000 per seedling. And I was telling my friend that one, I might not be able to spend. But that is how passionate he is. He is. When he's told that this particular um, kind of rosemary is better in producing essential oils, he will look for it at whatever cost. He will ship from abroad. At least I have not gotten to his level, but uh, that is it. I mean, you find people who are passionate about what you do. You even thought you are passionate, and you realize, no, hapa hakuna passion. There is somebody else who is even more passionate about uh, the things I thought I was passionate about. Yeah, but why is it that uh, young people, most of the young people have not ventured into herbs and spice farming? Is it because herbs are uh, only for the old people, the older generation, or is it uh, they lack knowledge? Because probably someone just knows there's this lemongrass or uh, there's uh, raspberry or mint. Um, is it that they don't have enough knowledge on uh, these um, kinds of herbs, or um, they lack mentors like you, like you who who is uh, doing a lot of things, like you've gone the extra mile of knowing? Mint can uh, cure flu, raspberry can uh, cure fibroid. Uh, where is the disconnect? One of the things that uh, we need to understand is that tra traditionally that people have been socialized to think like uh, farming is for old people. And you've even seen Kenya National Bureau of Statistics giving, uh, giving uh, you know, information that the, the average age of a Kenyan farmer is 54 years. With that's why we had uh, uh, colonial names like peace and farmers, <laughs> something that we really need to challenge. There is nothing like that. 
I mean, we need to get a better name. You know the word peasant. If you Google it about peasant, I mean, you you not like it. And that is what we. That is what even uh, I mean, even big bodies like National Bureau of will will say people in that village are peasant farmers. We really need to stop those colonial terms. So our youth do not want to be called peasant farmers. And that's why we really need to do a lot of mentorship to encourage them. And uh, I am very happy because uh, we have seen many young people uh, actually venturing into farming. So Kenya National Bureau of Statistics need to collect another set of data to find out how many young people are getting attracted into farming. Because I have even my former students, I said earlier that I'm a lecturer, who are actually serious farmers. I have one who has hired 30 acres of land in Naro and is growing a lot of things. So we just need to tell this, these young people, just need to encourage them. Uh, of course, uh, through, let's say, farm visits, uh, so that they can see that this can also be grown. If you visit a place like Gatanga, uh, they are growing a lot of lemongrass. Actually, they, most people have stopped uh, growing the maize and they are growing uh, part, some part of Gatanga. They, they are growing lemongrass. Why? Because they are selling lemongrass stems for 70 shillings a kilo. And they are ready, people, people who are ready, I mean, ready buying the, the crop. So you find a farmer is selling about 5,000, 6,000 a week out of a small portion of land, which if he, he was to, to grow maize, they cannot even produce a bag of maize, which they say retails at 6,000. So they're able to make 6,000, 5,000 a week. And we just need to let uh, young people visit such places and tell them, fine, uh, look, this, I mean, these are farmers. I mean, they may not be young. They have, uh, you know, 40s, 50s, even 30s. They are growing this, they are able to sustain themselves. Perhaps you don't need a large portion of farm. Uh, I mean, uh, just need to motivate them, talk about it. And uh, tell them, of course, on the, on the, the flip side, they are con men. <laughs> on or even social media, people who are out there to sell to others uh, seeds at exorbitant prices uh, with the rule of, uh, you know, fighting markets. Uh, like I saw somebody say, talking about people who are selling a certain seed to farmers at very high prices, uh, telling them when the crop is ready, we'll come and buy it. Uh, then they disappear through thin air. So we need to, 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 to teach uh, the, the young people both ways. Uh, I was so uh, presently surprised by one of my students who have just graduated. I think uh, it was uh, two weeks ago last Friday, but one from uh, our university. And uh, I saw he has a page on, on Facebook, uh, I mean, on, uh, on agribusiness. And uh, when I reached out to him, he told me he decided to ask a portion of, of land from his father, not as an inheritance, but for, as utility, to utilize it in growing crops. And he told me he's doing a lot of farming, a lot of fruit farming, uh, in, or, you know, along Bagadi Road. And I mean, that is a, a, a case, a young person who is, who is actually has just graduated, I think, in computer science, but he's a farmer. He is known more on Facebook as a farmer than uh, being a computer science student. So those are the things, those are the people we, we need to, to encourage, to help their peers so that they can see that there is um, uh, there is hope in farming. The other thing uh, for young people, farming, they need to assert that farming is not a get quick business. No, I mean, uh, it's not a get, a get quick scheme. I mean, you don't wake up in the morning, plant tomatoes, and tomorrow you're in the market. Uh, it calls for a lot of patience, a lot of resilience, uh, a lot of, you know, um, encouragement because sometimes you, you you plant your crop you're waiting for rains they don't show up you plant your crop uh, you are not expecting rains it rains things like tomatoes and uh, i mean you have no crop so in essence uh, those are a few skills that we our, our young people need to, uh, to to embrace so that they know that this is something that you can we, we can do and of course the fact that they can uh, they can uh, 
make use of technology, it's also a win-win situation because one can easily look for market elsewhere. They can even come together and uh, look for market somewhere, uh, even out of the country. They can even uh, source for exporters online because uh, actually for, for me, I look for market everywhere, uh, especially for lemongrass, which, is, which I've actually planted um, in my other farm in nearly about two and a half acres. So you, you, you talk to everybody about market. Let everybody know that you are looking for market for lemongrass and uh, also a, a value addition because that's the other thing. Because um, instead of just selling your raw crop, you, you can actually add value, dry it, you know, make powder, uh, start selling to a few people, and then you, you, you progress on that way. And uh, at the end of the day, you're putting food on the table, which is the most important thing. Thank you. Very interesting uh, discussion there. I've been told we need to pay some bills, but just do stay with us because uh, we'll be taking a short visa, pay some bills, and we'll be back and uh, to give our closing remarks and um, uh, let people uh, uh, share their, their questions. We'll sample some of the questions from. Our social media Twitter too, and uh, we'll be back after like two or three minutes with our closing remarks on, on today's show. So, do keep watching our farmers' media. We are all over. We are on Facebook, we are on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. Uh, find us there, send in your questions and your thoughts on what you think about uh, today's uh, discussion. And uh, sure enough, uh, Joyce and I will be coming back to give you our closing remarks. So, do keep watching our farmers' media.
Kim, where we've had a very interesting discussion about nasturtium uh, leaves and flower farming. I've learned so many things, like really how can someone, I, I'm, re I'm really eager and I want to go to that farm just to look at whatever is in there. Like uh, JC was saying, if somebody comes to your farm, they'll, uh, they'll think whatever you have planted is weeds. Joyce, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. We are back uh, from uh, that short break. I hope you've uh, sipped some water or tea. And um, yes. which tea are you having by? We are, we are just having water. <laughs> I need to come to your first um, hub so that I can tell people the cliche, you know. Today I had lemongrass tea or water, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. Today yeah, you'll invite me one of these. Karibu sana. Karibu sana. Yeah, I'll be there. one of these days. Now, in your closing remarks, um, what are your thoughts about um, herbs and spices uh, farming in Kenya? Is it a venture that uh, many people are taking it up? And uh, what can the government do to have more people engaging in uh, this herbs and spice business? Uh, okay, I, 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 I must say that uh, herbs and uh, spices business uh, is a viable business, uh, provided people have a broad perspective, including value addition. And in this, uh, at this point in, uh, in time, I, I, I have a friend of mine who has a large farm in Uganda, 30 acres of uh, different herbs. and. Uh, she she grows a lot of herbs which she 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 has package packages and uh, actually she has a shop here in Kenya and uh, one of the things she told me is that she was really helped by the government of Uganda she's a Kenyan by the way who had located to Uganda and uh, she was helped by the government of Uganda to 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 purchase uh, equipments for value addition dryers or a dry, I mean dry, dehydrators and dryers. Uh, and uh, it becomes a very viable business. So how would the government help, especially the county governments, because agriculture is a devolved function? function. Uh, is it possible for the county governments to think about uh, encouraging the young people to get engaged in, uh, in, um, in herbs and spices business? Is it possible for them to, to provide infrastructure so that uh, this, uh, the farmers can actually do value addition, including drying and, um, uh, you know, packaging. Is it possible to, for the county governments also to make it, uh, you know, easy to get, to engage in manufacturing? Because, uh, I mean, the people are complaining. I'm in a group on Facebook on, uh, you know, where we people are talking about small cottage industries, where people grow herbs, let's say, for example, and uh, um, uh, you know, add value, add meal and make powder. And the minute uh, the, the county government realizes that you are doing any form of manufacturing, it becomes a big issue. What about uh, things like um, quality, calves? Uh, calves need also to also to, to be considerate about, uh, I'm not, I don't, I don't mean we, we, we do substandard quantity, I mean uh, substandard quality. However, we need to, to have and to encourage people. We have to not just to, to police people, but also encourage them, you know, add value. I mean, help people add value to their products. You know, you don't have to put uh, so many, uh, you know, fees for people to, who are trying to, to, to make uh, better their lives. So as we encourage young people, we also need to, to think about value addition because these hubs actually ca cannot, uh, you know, being, being. They're not, there is no value addition. They cannot last for long. So we need to think about value addition at the end of the day. Uh, if it's export market, we need to think about how to, to mitigate against uh, brokers who, who really take advantage of farmers. I had uh, somebody who, want, who wanted to buy my lemongrass at 50 shillings a kilo. 
Uh, and I know they were selling at, I mean, they were to sell at an exorbitant price. So, I mean, we need to think about how we can help the populace so that they are able to to, to make good uh, the business through, let's say, direct marketing. And uh, I mean, of course, the exporters, because again, it's not easy to, to be an exporter as, as, you know, a young person or even somebody who is starting up. Um, basically, that is how, we, I mean, people can be help, helped a bit. and they, also uh, encouraging the, the people. For example, my friend in Uganda was telling me that in every Kibada, people are selling lemongrass. And he was saying, I don't understand why people in Kenya are not taking lemongrass. Because of its potency. We need to educate people. Let people take uh, lemongrass tea, chamomile tea, uh, on top of the other tea and coffee and such kind of a thing as a way of improving their health generally. Yes. Yeah, that point you've raised is very interesting because um, you rarely if you go to the um, probably in different places, but you'll never find them in uh, in um, in the market. Yes, yes, they're not there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They, so I think a lot of uh, awareness needs to be made, and people need. Yes. To be for me, they are useful because probably I would. If you told me today to buy the rule that you mentioned, I'd be like, okay, okay. Why am I even buying this thing? Like, I don't know how to use it. I don't know if it is. I'm supposed to boil it or dry it and consume it as a powder. You know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so the questions that uh, we've received here, and uh, one one of them is uh, someone is asking, where is the market uh, for the hubs? Like uh, you've just mentioned, the markets are readily available. It's people who do not know how to market their products. Probably share with us how you, you market your products. Where do you market and how do you go about it, uh, finding market for your hubs? Uh, I must say that online is a place because... Uh, and uh, I mean, I mean, the, the the market now has shifted to online. The market has shifted to online, and uh, e-commerce e is is the thing. Uh, I think two weeks ago, I I bought lemongrass from Meru. Uh, and uh, it was I just pay. I mean, I, I mean, of course, of course, you need to have to do your due diligence. I uh, got that contract from my um Kulimayang. She is a is an online e-commerce e platform, and uh, because of uh, that person being a member of Mukulimayang, you are able to now trust the process. So you just order. So in essence, the market has shifted to online, and then um, they educate people on what the uh, the uses of these 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 things are, uh, because. If I take this raspberry tea, uh, I will not. I will actually be able to navigate this issue of fibroids that has been uh, bothering me. And uh, by I assure you, my raspberry is always, you know, <laughs> stripped of its of its leaves always. And I keep trying to propagate it. I can't because, of course, when you hear somebody is struggling with steroids, as a woman, you don't want them to struggle. So let us start by first of all educating our people because uh, one of the challenges I find with farmers: you want to 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 to, to plant ten acres of lemongrass, not knowing where to say. What if you start small and start building your community of uh, of of uh, uh, of, of, of buyers and then you build and if people trust you you are in business because again for online business trust is a currency you cannot if people don't trust you if you don't keep on telling others about you if people don't give you positive reviews it will be a challenge to um, to sell online but of course I mean let people do let people do the research and if this is a product that has potency it can sell. That one I can assure you it can sell. Mm. Another question here is um, someone is asking can uh, hubs grow in any kind of soil and uh, where can uh, seedlings be found? 
and um, does someone need certification for them to venture into the hubs uh, business? Uh, I'll start with the last one. You don't need any certification to enter into hubs farming, hubs business, mm. uh, because on is they are crops like like others. Of course. Uh, there are some crops that probably may, may need licensing, but uh, that that is an extreme. I, I actually even I uh, used to require certificate uh, from KWS, but these days we are growing it anyway because it a bit I don't know. I mean, only some <laughs> let's say some species that are endangered. I, I don't have a license, and I grow aruvera for all my uses, my goats, and recently I got a a, a, a specific specific species from Turkana called Aloe Turkanesis and I it was brought to Nairobi and I don't have not had anybody telling me to get registration from KWS. Uh, you don't need mm -hmm. certification. Uh, different mm -hmm. different hubs have different soil requirements. Mm -hmm. We are not going to to clamp them together and say they need red soil or loamy soil. But the bottom line, they need healthy soil, soil with nutrients, because you cannot demand from the soil what you have not put into it. So, I mean, you have to have manure, you have to have, uh, I mean, uh, let's say what I was calling integrated farming, things like mulching to protect, I mean, uh, to, to protect the soil also, because the soil also needs to be protected uh, from the sun, from the rain. No rain does not need to fall directly on the soil. It needs to fall on the mulch. That is what we are, I was calling integrated farming. And all that information yeah. is in the public. Yes. Yeah. Uh, where can someone get seedlings uh, as we come to our conclusion? Uh, just go online. If you need ro anybody who needs rosemary seedlings, I have plenty. I uh, have plenty. Anybody who needs lavender seedlings, I have plenty. Uh, anybody who needs lemongrass seedlings, I have plenty. Anyway, and many other things. Anybody who needs nasturtium seedlings, I have plenty. Uh, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. just just find online. Of course, uh, you can. Uh, yeah, my, my page on Facebook is accessible to the public. Uh, just ask me if you, you I mean, whatever seedling I have. If you need anything else, I will direct you to the other farmers, uh, the other nurseries where they, they, are, they are propagating the seedlings. Okay, so for the benefit of our audience, if they want to get in touch with you, we share your Facebook page or you have a page for the hub? Uh, my Facebook page, and also I have, uh, I have another page which I call Mother Nature Organic Farm. That is my, about my farms that I produce, although it is not as active by, as my Facebook page. I don't so so mind if they have my, my my phone contact. I have a contact for business. Uh, the, mm -hmm. That is zero seven three 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 sixty eight nine seventy four. Let me share the contacts on our screen for people to see and uh, interact with you. Those who are wishing to venture into hub farming and those who probably want to get knowledge. So today you've actually interested me even me now. I think I'll come to your yeah. farm just to get everything that you have, a little bit of everything, so that I start the hub business. I think in the, in the, in this, that should be my New Year's resolution, venturing into Karib hub sana. business. Karib sana. So, yes, thank you so much. Uh, Joyce uh, Cyrus number is 733 That's 733 you can get in touch with her if you need um, to get any education, any information, and uh, to grow your knowledge on um, uh, hubs and uh, dairy goat farming. And as you know, here at Farmers Media, this is where we connect and uh, link you to the market, link you to the farmers. We help you grow, and uh, we also help you learn. Like today's show has been very educative. I didn't know there are so many uh, hubs and uh, spices. Uh, like I'm really eager to be linked to the Kamau who is doing 3,000 kinds of hubs, my friend. Yes. Now this is the kind of fun. Thank you so much, Joyce, for making time. We'll be looking up for you for more insights on uh, various. Now in the next edition, probably we can go deeper into talking about this various hub. This is the health the benefit of the hub. This is how to grow it. This is how to value add it. And this is how to consume it. Probably you'll make some time and um, 
you can visit your farm. We do more features for people to understand and see and know the various hubs that you have. Thank you so much for making time. Okay, you're welcome and it was a pleasure being in your show. Thank you so much and have a blessed evening. Thank you so much. And um, with that note, we are not going, uh, uh, we are not ending the show yet because uh, there's a lot uh, that is still coming up, uh, including uh, the day's highlights. Um, if you are not in Nairobi for the Nairobi Festival, my friend, I don't know where you are at. <laughs> so keep watching up our media. We'll be back shortly to talk about the stories that are making headlines. Have a look at the traffic. What are we going home into? What are we getting into in the traffic update? And um, yes, we'll have the proverb of the day as we put uh, into the show in the evening. Some drivers will just more we'll be back shortly. This, this is, is a, farmer's, a, farmer's, a farmer's media. A farmer's media. We tell you the stories of African farmers. Farmers is the home of Africa Farmers Club in, and by extension African Farmers. The whole idea behind uh, Farmers is to transform the image of an African farmer from a producer into an agripreneur. Somebody who actually does not think about how to produce onions but how much is going to be used to produce onions and so that, that, that way then they can be able to transform their vision, they can be able to look at their farms as businesses and they can be able to know when to engage the market. What we have done is that we have developed a hub where farmers bring their, co their, their information, bring their questions, their challenges, and other farmers are there to come out and help. Facebook has not just been instrumental. Facebook has been a working partner for myself as well. And uh, how they have, Facebook has actually transformed the way we relate an open platform. My background is in tech. And I know it, you cannot build a platform that can reach out to so many people. Initially, it was just a few farmers in two counties, Machakos County and Kajiado counties, but now it has transformed. We have uh, a stronger membership from Nigeria and Zambia than even Kenya itself, you know. And the reason behind this is 
the messages I get from different farmers across Africa. And then something interesting came to my mind and I thought about using the camera. Uh, every time I visited farmers, I would be able to post uh, in the community, in the group, in my own profile, and just share the story of the farmer that I visited. And then I asked myself, why wouldn't I get this information, develop it in a way that other people can be able to benefit? If we go for a training, how do we capture that so that those who are not, the farmers who are not able to come for that training can still benefit? And hence the birth of uh, a farmer's media. Our mission as an organization is to, her to, to help farmers, African farmers, to attain knowledge and grow profits. Amarandas, or locally known as terere, is a highly nutritious vegetable that is cultivated and consumed as a leafy vegetable in many parts of the world. It's easy to grow, matures fast, as it takes an incredible shorter period than most traditional crops. There are many species of amarandas, with some green and others red in color. When growing amarandas, ensure the soil is well drained and rich in phosphorus and most importantly ensure the seeds are well distributed to achieve an even spread when establishing a green amaranthus field. Amaranthus is especially loved for its tender leaves and for their healthy dose of ions, vitamins and a range of minerals. If you work on a farm, you probably handle pesticides. Pesticides are most dangerous when in storage because they are still in their concentrated forms. The storage of pesticides uh, should be looked at in uh, three key areas. The first one is uh, safety to the worker who is working there, then safety to the, pro to the products, and also now the physical structure of the, pro the, of the facility. The best practice is that uh, the storage store of our pests, pesticides or other pest control products should be a permanent building, not a temporary building. All pesticides should have important information on the label on how to store them. Follow manufacturer's instruction for proper storage of pesticides. Emphasis should be put on storage areas, 
temperatures, location and safety. Location matters very much when you, when you are setting up a facility for storage of pesticides. A pesticide store should be away from, from people as much as possible. If pesticides are stored on your property, make sure the storage room is locked and an appropriate warning sign on the door put in a language understood by anyone residing on the property or locked away in a box. Store pesticides in a dry place, away from direct sunlight and in a well-ventilated Now to the evening farm drive with me, Jackie Mo. I hope uh, you're enjoying your lemongrass tea as I am enjoying. Told you we have lemongrass buana here. We don't joke with us. We also have rosemary. Uh, my director, up, uh, <laughs> you made me laugh. Eh? He's supposed to talk back on the talk back, and instead of pressing the talk back, he's just like, okay. <laughs> The way he has enjoyed the show. <laughs> but I hope uh, you really learned a lot and gained a lot of knowledge from um, the Evening Farm Drive. Now we want to take a look at uh, some of the stories that are making headlines. Um, there is a story of uh, world leaders um, who uh, had a meeting earlier this week and uh, the, the thing achieving zero hunger in Africa is within reach. And uh, this, they hope, uh, is uh, the discussion they're going to have uh, during the African Food Summit that is going to be held in Dakar, Senegal next year. That is uh, from January 25th to the 27th. But uh, the world leaders are optimistic and they're saying achieving uh, zero hunger in Africa is within reach. Um, I don't know what is your take. Uh, what do you think about food security, uh, especially in Africa, uh, keeping in mind that um, we've... Uh, what we are, Kenya is one of the countries that have been uh, worst hit by the drought situation. Even as much as uh, it's raining in most parts of the country, Kajiado is still receiving minimal rain. And I know even uh, other, country, uh, other counties uh, complaining of the same. They're, they're like, um, the rainfall that uh, has uh, fallen this time is way below. So I, I'm not sure whether uh, the world leaders are um, uh, sure or whether they are are going to stand uh, come 2023. Now, it has been 10 months uh, since the toll of uh, the war in Ukraine. Um, we uh, will be looking at uh, this um, story keenly in our breakfast show just uh, to understand um, the situation uh, between Russia and Ukraine um, as um, people look at... Um, the toll of uh, what the war has uh, caused uh, to many economies, uh, to the food systems. Uh, as you know, most of um, wheat used to come from Ukraine. Most of the fertilizers and uh, farm inputs used to come from Ukraine. And um, since the war started, a lot um, has really changed uh, in terms of um, getting supplies uh, that are used uh, by most farmers. Uh, in other stories is that uh, Kenya is set to host a locust conference. Um, uh, this is uh, in preparedness for any locust attack. I think um, uh, this is one of the moves by the agriculture ministry that uh, is uh, somehow um, uh, makes sense uh, in some way because for the first time we are seeing um, the ministry With the smart greenhouse, um, he visited um, Inefa is one of um, the startup companies that uh, helps farmers in um, uh, installing uh, smart greenhouses that do not require a lot of um, uh, farming farm farm hands uh, to work in, in the in the greenhouses. So um, we'll be looking for Taita's uh to talk to him, get to find out um, what 
his thoughts are and um even as we wind uh, this year 2022 what has uh, what has been his uh, one of his take homes uh we've seen uh, uh the impact stories from uh Sinefa, what they've said um the impact of um, I've really had a very interesting show. Uh, like I said, I'm digging up and I'm crushing on uh, Mary Mudama. And uh, yes, you are one resilient woman. Keep on keeping, my dear. This is specifically for you. <laughs> Someone is looking at me like, what, what, what are you saying? <laughs> but yes, you are one resilient woman. If I could just remove this hat, my friend, I could remove it for you. And yes, that has been the evening form drive. Thank you so much for your continued support. Thank you for watching. Thank you to my director, Oga Calvin and Oga Divine Adibayo uh, behind the, the cameras and uh, for the sound, for the... Good work that is technology matters. And yes, <laughs> it's not that I don't phone you. You think five keep the comments coming if you want to be featured get to us on our facebook page and we'll get in touch with you i've been your host jackie mo until kesha ciao bye